Well, good Monday afternoon, Living Water Church. I just was so encouraged yesterday by Dave getting up and sharing the word and, and bringing forth the message, and he just did a fantastic job. Just um, knocked it out of the park, delivered a solid uh, exegesis of the word and, and brought us through the passage in Mark 7. And um, it was just such an encouragement to me. And this is no uh, knock to Dave's first attempt, but um, it took me let me see, seven years to get from my first message until my second message, and it only took Dave six weeks, and the improvement I've seen just in the course of that six weeks is just tremendous, and it, it just shows how he is um, doing and modeling exactly what he talked to us about yesterday, and that the only real way to win is to give up and to surrender, and, and I see that modeled in Dave's life as he uh, surrenders to what the Lord is calling him into in ministry and in vocational service and, and in his job and in his home life. Um, we see him modeling the um, acts of leadership in the men's group with excellence. We see him teaching with excellence, and, and we just see uh, and are encouraged by somebody who has truly shown us what it's like to model uh, su surrendered lordship living in their life. So um, thank you so much, Dave, for the message you shared with us. Um, and I know many of us are uh, so encouraged by what's what the Lord is doing in your life. And, and one quick kind of just tie into what Dave uh, was talking about yesterday and and there's nothing I need to correct he did a fantastic job I know he was joking around about that um, I was not worried in the slightest I know the spirit was leading him yesterday so um, just one one topic as we were going through that passage in seven it's it says that the scribes and the Pharisees right in the beginning of seven it says that they gathered around him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem and they saw some of the disciples eating with the hands that were not washed and this is an interesting thing that's going on here is the, the scribes are traveling from Jerusalem and it's dependent exactly where Jesus is at this point in his ministry. We have a good idea roughly, but within a couple miles, they are traveling roughly 80 miles from Jerusalem to come to where Jesus is all so they can bring a charge, a minor accusation against him about something that's their rules and not even the rules of God. And, and they have acquainted, uh, acqu they have acquitted themselves before God as if they are the holiest people that ever lived, uh, the most righteous people that ever lived. And now they're, they're seeing Jesus perform all these mighty miracles, all these mighty works and, and teaching with authority. And they're seeing this one tiny little action, the action of his disciples not washing their hands. And that's something that's enough to draw them 80 miles outside of their homes to come on foot. They didn't have a Honda Civic where they could drive 80 miles. On foot, they came 80 miles in order to approach Jesus about the washing of hands. And um, I know that sounds crazy, guys, but we are so often not far off from doing something like this. When when we see something that's become church tradition and, and we love it so much, we, we bump it up above the action of actually following God in spirit and in truth with our hearts and with the spirit. And, and what we do is we, we try to force that onto somebody, force that thing onto somebody with such passion that we have elevated ourselves into extreme self-righteousness. And it can happen inside homes, it can happen in jobs, it can happen at church, primarily at church. And, and we have to be so cautious and careful to not let that creep into the church. The, highest form of legalism, the highest form of uh, something that breaks down the authority of God's word is for me to step into your life and tell you outside of God's word, just tell you, this is what I think you should do to be a good Christian. This is what I think you should do in order to serve the Lord. This is what I think you should do in order to be a faithful steward to God. And, and we have to be so cautious about doing that because God has called us all into unique areas of vocational service. And what I am called to do by the Lord is not necessarily what you're called to do by the Lord. So just as a for instance with that, I, and I've told you guys this time and time and time again, but I don't generally play video games because I have an issue with playing video games. If I start to play video games, I become so enthralled and addicted that I consumes my life. So God has um, graciously removed those from my life. And, and I don't play any games at all anymore. I don't play video games because I can't control myself. Now, that's not a mark or an action of being a good Christian. That's a mark or an action of some issue that I have in my life that's keeping me away from something that somebody else might be able to go and have in their life without an issue. There might be somebody who's watching right now who can go and play a video game without it consuming their very being. Now, God has pulled me away from those things, and, and it's not good or healthy or wise for me to be involved in video games, but somebody else may be able to play a game 
and it's no issue and it's not a sin before them for the Lord just because it might be for me. So it would be a sin if I were to go and tell them, you cannot play because I can't play. And this can happen with anything. This can happen in the things we dress like, the the things we talk about, the places we go, the movies we watch, the um, maybe mannerisms of a Christian's life. You know, we want everyone to kind of conform to the basic Christian image. And we're, there's no room to allow anyone who is um, not yet maybe there where God is calling them to be, or somebody who just acts a little different than we do. And we want them to conform to our image and not to God's image. So we have to be so careful with this. When somebody comes and tells you, do not taste or do not touch or, or do not go or do not dress or do not act or one of those do statements, and you can't find a biblical precedent for that backing it up, in scripture where God is commanding us not to do that, then guys, this is something you have to check with the spirit in yourself. The the spirit of God reigns fully in your heart and say, is this something that I cannot do or is this just something that they cannot do? And, and we have to be so cautious about not pushing that thing onto another individual because that is the highest form of legalism when I'm going to take my legalistic nature or my personal spiritual growth pattern and I'm going to push it onto you. So we want to shy away from that and not be the Pharisees that are walking 80 miles to correct somebody. So I pray that that message binds to your hearts and, and that you take you take that and you take what we heard from Dave yesterday from Mark 7 and that you allow it to speak into your life about how you can model Christ to those around you and not allow legalism to build within your life. So uh, just a beautiful message and a powerful message from God's word. So um, guys, I have a lot of announcements. Uh, something new that I haven't told you about that's coming up quickly, actually. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so if you guys were around last year, around Christmas time, you guys watched the Behold the Lamb of God concert that we played here in January uh, in place of a service. And it's a Andrew Peterson's rendition of kind of taking the message of Genesis all the way up until uh, the redemption of Jesus's work on the cross, his birth and his his resurrection and, and why that's so important. The miracle and beholding really the Lamb of God as he's come to take away the sins of the world. And it just in song format tells the message of the Bible. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful action that the songs do and portray, um, they portray this whole entire kind of complete biblical message from start to finish, the, the kind of the thread of Jesus throughout it, and uh, but in song format. So it's very entertaining to listen to. It's very informative. Um, and it's just a great time of worship where we sing some Christmas, Christmas music that's completely geared towards the coming of Jesus Christ. So if you guys can come out, we have three events going on. And kind of one of the... Uh, great things about this event is that there are three churches connected to this um, worship set. So we have our church, Living Water Church, we have Hyde Park Baptist Church, and then we have Grace Bible Church are all coming together to play this concert event. So we're going to host at all three churches, and if you can't make one of the nights, you're more than welcome to go to the other churches or encouraged to um, so we can uh, build some community and support for one another out. So this upcoming Friday, we're going to be at Grace Bible Church. Um, over in Wappingers Falls, and that's going to be at 6.30 p.m. for this show, this upcoming Friday. And then the following Friday, the 17th, we're going to be here at Living Water Church, 6.30 p.m. here at the church, Friday evening. You can come out and watch Behold the Lamb of God concert. And then the following day, the 18th, we are going to have the concert over at Hyde Park Baptist Church. Same times for all of them. So this upcoming Friday, the following Friday, and the following Saturday. So the 17th and 18th, 17th here, 18th over at Hyde Park. The 11th is at um, Grace Bible. So I'll put that all in the description so I don't confuse you too much here, but that's what's going on with Behold the Lamb of God concert. I would really, really strongly suggest you go and check out Andrew Peterson's um, album that's out, Behold the Lamb of God album. It's, they're great songs. My kids sing them in the car constantly. They look forward to Christmas, so that way we put the album on in the car and they can listen to Behold the Lamb of God. And uh, you can come out and listen to it and be encouraged. A great opportunity to bring a friend that might not necessarily come to church, that they can come and sit and listen in song format to the entire transition from, from Genesis to Christ in the Bible. So I would really highly encourage you guys to come out to that uh, on either one of those two Fridays or the following Saturday. So um, the next thing we have is Kathy French's uh, hosting um, a ladies event here as the women's uh, leader in the church. Kathy French is leading up a women's luncheon. You can contact her. Her number's in the description below. It is on the 18th, uh, Saturday the 18th. So that is coming up quickly. So if you're not signed up, you can sign up here at the church right on the back table or contact Kathy. Her number's in the description. Um, it's going to be in the um, early 
uh, or late morning, sorry. It's going to be in the late morning to early afternoon. Um, so please sign up for that Saturday the 18th. Now guys, our annual business meeting is this upcoming Sunday. And just a couple quick details about that. We have a open form time from 5 to 6 p.m. So um, most of the financial team and myself and uh, some of the leaders are going to be here at the church. So if you just have any question whatsoever, any question about the church, any question about the finances, any question about the structure or organizational processes of the church, any question about the vision or casting of the church, where we're going, what are we doing, why we do it, any of those things, or just a general question for one of us, um, please come out to that. 5 to 6 p.m., this upcoming Sunday, uh, the 12th, we're going to have that open forum time. So if you just have a question about the church or just some questions that need answering, come out to that 5 to 6 p.m. this upcoming Saturday. And the uh, kind of the knowledge base behind that, so you know, there's no question that's off the table. This church is an open book. We will answer any and all questions that come out. Uh, but we have a lot to cover in our business meeting, which is going to run starting at 6 p.m. And what we can't do is field a whole ton of questions during the meeting, or we'll, we're going to run out of time. We have a lot of items and a lot of topics to cover in that meeting. And we're going to be more just disseminating information and voting on that information in the meeting. So if you have questions, please show up earlier, we uh, put out the bylaws and constitutional practices of the church to every member of this church um, last night in an email. So if you haven't received that and you think you're a member and should have, please contact me this week so I can get that out to you and make sure that the membership role is up to date. Um, and the budget is going to be voted on. Some of our trustees and leaders are going to be voted on this upcoming Sunday. So a lot going on. So if you have questions, come out 5 to 6 p.m. If not, starting at 6 p.m., we are going to start our annual business meeting. It's probably going to run a little bit, oh, two hours or longer because we do have a lot to cover, guys. And I'm sorry about the long meeting, but we will try to get through it as quick as possible and get all the information out. Um, if you are a member, uh, Sunday afternoon, we're going to send out a online link so you can tune in live with us that Sunday evening. Um, for non-members, you have to come and attend in person. I'm sorry. Uh, so members will get an online link if you cannot attend in person. That way you're able to vote um, online. And we do highly encourage everyone to be in attendance in person. It's just easier to transfer information that way. So come out next Sunday, 5 to 6 for the question, question and answer time from 6 to approximately 8 or 8.30 for the annual business meeting. Um, and the day before that preceding day is the LaGrange Festival of Lights, uh, which Living Water Church is going to have a float at. So feel free to come out and drive through that. I believe it's 5 to 9 p.m. Um, over at Stringham Park so you can drive through that and see our float and all the other Christmas lights and just have a good night with your family. So guys, if you need anything else, I know it's a ton of information, but my number's in the description below. You can text me or call me or call one of the elders. We'd be happy to answer any questions you have as we go through this upcoming week. So I pray you guys all have a blessed week. I'm looking forward to worshiping with you on Sunday and uh, just love you guys. I'll see you. Bye. <music>